Every year in the dead of winter, Consumer Reports Chief Power Equipment Tester Peter Sawchuk heads to Florida. Tough gig, right? Actually, he spends six weeks cutting, mulching, and bagging on five acres of grass to test which lawnmowers make the Consumer Reports cut. Also, you have an easier time when you go shopping. You'll want to match a mower to your lawn. There are three major categories, manual reel, walk behind, and riding mowers. Interested in a specific type of mower? Click on any chapter to skip ahead. Looking to put the manual back in manual labor? The real mower offers a touch of nostalgia. When you push this mower, it turns a series of curved blades that cut your grass. Generally, real mowers run from $70 to $200 and have a cutting width of 14 to 18 inches. Real mowers are best for small plots of land, about an eighth of an acre. They're quiet, inexpensive, relatively safe to operate, easy to maintain, and good for the environment since there's no gas engine. But our experts say keep these things in mind before buying one of these throwbacks. Real mowers tend to bounce over bumpy terrain. If your yard surface is uneven, consider a different style of mower or look for one without small front wheels that might get stuck in divots or holes. You'll need to keep your grass height under three inches or it will get too hard to cut. That means trimming more frequently, roughly every four days in the height of growing season. Real mowers leave grass clippings on your lawn so if you don't like that, you'll have to get out a rake or blower. But clippings are a good source of nitrogen. Walk-behind mowers are the most popular mowers in America. They're best for small to medium-sized lawns, about a half acre depending on which type you choose. They use a spinning rotary blade to slice through grass and usually have a cutting width of 15 to 22 inches. You can choose between models that run on gasoline engines, battery power, or an electric power cord. More on that in a moment. First, you'll need to decide whether to opt for a push walk-behind mower or a self-propelled one. Push mowers are less expensive walk-behinds. A basic one costs less than $200. They can tackle lawns about a quarter of an acre or less and most mulch, bag, and discharge grass. While walk-behind push mowers supply power to the blades, keep in mind you're still doing all the pushing. Look for a push mower with little to no flex in the handlebar. That way, you can keep a sturdy grip. You'll find models sporting this indentation more comfortable to hold. Self-propelled models do everything the push models can, but can handle bigger yards than push mowers, generally anything under an acre. They're a great place to start if you don't want to do all the pushing because the engine also drives the wheels. They typically come with cutting widths of about 21 to 22 inches and range from $250 to $800 depending on features you choose. You'll see side valve and overhead valve gas engines. Overhead valve engines are a premium option and only cost about $20 more Plus, they start easier, are quieter, and tend to last longer. Look for the letters OHV on the engine. Next choice, single or variable speeds. Single speed self-propelled mowers tend to cost less, but variable speeds let you move faster when the job is easier or slow down for thick grass. Variable speeds are available in front, rear, and all-wheel drive. If you've got a relatively flat lawn, a front-wheel drive mower may be all you need. If you've got hills, Consumer Report says consider rear wheel drive. It delivers better traction on slopes. It also helps if you bag grass. A mower's front wheels tend to rise as the bag in the back fills up. Most single speed mowers have front wheel drive. You'll generally need to move up to multiple speed mowers for rear wheel drive. All wheel drive mowers boast superior traction on hills, but they come at a premium. You can check out more all wheel, rear wheel, and front wheel drive mower info here. Now, let's talk power. Gasoline mowers perform significantly better than corded electric and battery-powered mowers in Consumer Reports tests. Today's gasoline models are easy to start and offer stellar cutting power, especially in tall, thick grass. Battery-powered walk-behind mowers typically use a 24 to 80 volt battery to power the mower. They'll cost $300 to $500 or more depending on whether you want a push or self-propelled model. They're generally quieter and require less maintenance than gas engines but they have smaller cutting widths than gasoline mowers, 14 to 20 inches. And some batteries can make the mower heavier and harder to push. Lithium ion batteries are lighter than lead acid batteries and more powerful. And remember, batteries require some maintenance. They need to be charged even in the winter. Skip this step and your battery may die for good. A well cared for battery can last about five years. A new one costs over hundred dollars, so factor that in. Then there are corded electrics. They're inexpensive. $160 to $250. But 
Consumer Reports says the cord makes maneuvering extremely difficult and dangerous if you run over it. And, like battery-powered mowers, they have smaller cutting widths than gasoline mowers. If you're looking for advanced features, you'll find them mostly on self-propelled walk-behinds. Here are the ones our testers like the best. Electric start on gas engines is easier than pulling a cord. Single lever cutting height allows you to move the deck up and down with a single lever rather than adjusting each wheel. Washout ports make it easy to clean all those clippings under the deck. A blade brake engagement control lets you release the handlebar and stop the blade while the engine stays on. That way you can empty the bag or move an obstacle and not have to restart. If you've got more than an acre of land to mow or you're mowing for more than an hour with your walk behind, it might be time to consider a riding mower. Almost all ride-ons are powered by gas engines, but we checked out one electric ride-on mower, and we expect to see more coming to market. Today's riding mowers are a lot more high-tech, often souped up like cars with hydraulic power steering, cruise control, satellite radios, smartphone connectors, and some manufacturers now offer apps that use a Bluetooth connection to tell you when it's time for maintenance. Nearly all ride-on mowers are equipped with an overhead valve engine, either single or twin cylinder engines. Consumer Reports says twin cylinder engines provide a little more power, particularly in heavier grass, run a little smoother, and offer longer engine life. There are three types of ride-ons, lawn tractors, zero turn radius mowers, or ZTRs, and rear engine riders. Lawn tractors generally cost $1,000 to $4,000 and have 42 to 54 inch cutting decks. They can bag, mulch, or side discharge clippings. You drive with a steering wheel, and some go as fast as seven miles per hour. But Consumer Reports says stick to three and a half to four miles per hour, or you'll end up with clumps of grass in your lawn. Consider a narrow turning radius on a tractor so it's easier to cut around obstacles like trees. For more money, a few tractors have four wheel steering, where the front and back wheels turn together for even tighter turning. But Consumer Reports suggests skipping it. Turning radiuses are narrowing on new two wheel steering tractors. Many tractors offer added attachments like snow throwers, plows, and rototillers. We're also seeing hybrid machines like this utility vehicle. It can mow, tow, and generate electrical power for all your other tools. Then there are zero turn radius mowers. This is our highest rated category and also the most expensive, $2,300 to $4,000. These riding mowers are similar to the ones landscapers use with a rear engine and rear wheel steering. They offer cutting widths from 42 to 60 inches. Most ETRs you drive using a set of levers that accelerate, steer, and brake. That can be tricky if you're not accustomed to the design, which is why more manufacturers are offering ZTRs with steering wheels. ZTRs can turn circles in one place and are the fastest way to cut your grass. Like tractors, they can side discharge, bag, or mulch your grass clippings. But on hills, ZTRs can lose traction and are hard to steer and control. And if you're not careful, the rear steering wheels can tear up your grass during turns, especially at higher speeds. There are also rear engine riders. In many cases, these are less expensive than ZTRs or tractors, about $1,000 to $1,600. Since the engine is in the back, like a ZTR, there's more trimming visibility than with a lawn tractor. Rear engine mowers also tend to take up less space, so storing them is easier. However, they have narrower cutting widths, about 24 to 33 inches. And while they provide a decent cut, in general, Consumer Reports tests find they don't go as fast or handle as well as tractors or ZTRs. As for features, ride-on mowers have plenty. You'll see conveniences like high back comfortable seats, padded steering wheels, and cup holders. Here are some other key features our testers say to consider. Infinite drive speeds is like having an automatic transmission for your mower. Electric power takeoff engages the blade electrically instead of requiring you to do it manually. Reverse lets you mow going backward, helpful in tight areas. Look for fuel levels you can see from the seat while you're riding. Plenty of ride-ons come with hour meters that track the number of hours the engine has been operating so you know when to service your mower. A washout port makes it easy to clean up the blade. You just connect a hose in the port, turn on the hose, start up the machine, and engage the blades and wash out clippings. This is easier than trying to get under the tractor. Having a robot do all your mowing sounds great, but you'll pay for that. Prices typically start at $1,400 and go up to more than $2,000. That's the cost of a lawn tractor. You'll need to set a perimeter wire to keep the machine in your yard. 
The robot will randomly crisscross within the wire in reverse direction when it hits the wire or an obstacle. You can program some using an app. They can mow when you wouldn't want to, at night and in the heat, for instance. Consumer Reports tests in the past found cut quality wasn't as good as conventional mowers, but we plan on checking out some new robotic mowers this summer to see how they perform. No matter which mower you choose, it's important to take good care of it. Here are some top tips from Consumer Reports. Store your mower in a covered space. Wash away grass clippings after each use. With powered mowers, have the blade sharpened at the start of each season and about three to four more times after that. Sharp blades save fuel and cut the grass more cleanly, making it healthier. Sharpen real mower blades every two years. Also, set the bed knife. This is the stationary part of real mowers the blades pass over to cut the grass. The bed knife has to be close enough to the blades so that they graze it without hitting it. Kind of like cutting shears or scissors. You can buy kits to do this, but Consumer Reports suggests finding a pro. If your mower won't start, bad gas is likely the culprit. Empty the old fuel and make sure to add a fuel stabilizer next time. Replace spark plugs every 100 hours or two to three years. Change the oil. For ride-ons, check the manual to see how many hours the machine can operate before it needs an oil change. For walk-behinds, change it at the start of the season. Change the air filters according to the owner manual instructions. If the belts look worn, frayed, or cracked, get new ones. Check the tire pressure at the start of the season. Finally, mow safely. Wear hearing protection, keep children and pets away from running mowers, and be careful mowing on hills. Most manufacturers include a diagram in the owner's manual you can use to figure out whether the slopes in your yard are too steep. And keep gasoline in an approved container away from ignition sources. For all of our latest ratings and reviews on lawnmowers, be sure to check out consumerreports.org.